So the next thing I definitely do differently would be what is going on guys welcome back to the channel today's video is going to be a little bit different I'm actually going to do a one-year review on my off-road bumper I've gotten smashed with questions on this thing about how I built it and how it's held up and about people asking about plans and all that sort of stuff and if I make them for um, the public and all that so this was just a one-off um, I did design this it took me about two years to design just on and off about what I wanted to do and it was my very first opening video to YouTube so with this bumper, I've been asked about what sort of thickness steel I've used, um, how it attaches to the chassis and how that tow bar is held up. Um, also about spare wheel wobble because that's a big thing as well. But yeah, a lot of you guys have mentioned that all the, the bumpers um, on the aftermarket sort of ARB or anything like that are all very expensive, which I do understand that. I did look into Kmar and Outback accessories and they're all very expensive. Um, and I just wanted to build something so this got me into more fabrication videos and all that sort of stuff And I do want to hit more into that. So if you guys haven't seen that video check the link above All right, so the first thing I want to mention is this bumper is made out of 3mm thick steel now If I was to go back and do it again, I would definitely make it out of 4mm I was trying to keep the weight down but because I've got a tow bar and that in there It would have would have been nice to have it out of 4mm The next thing I probably would have changed would be to add a little bit more thickness here I did want a bit of a curve just to give this thing a bit more of a style look So it didn't look like just a big bit of C-section bolted on the back So I'd probably make it a little bit thicker here and, and then that way my spindle would have been able to come down a bit further and tie in a bit more I did run into a bit of interference with the light there As, as I said, um, check out part one, you guys will see that Yeah, so I sort of ran out of room, it's very tight behind there So if I had made that a bit thicker I would have been able to brace it at the bottom. So yeah, this thing, this bumper was really good for the first few months. Um, driving it around, it was all good. Went through some corrugations and that. And it actually started to wobble a little bit more than usual. So I jumped underneath and noticed that one of the mounts had sort of cracked. So what I had to do was add a plate underneath, which I'll show you guys after. But yeah, if I had made that a little bit thicker, I would have been able to run an extra plate underneath as sort of a bash plate. And would have been able to tie the bottom of the spindle in. As I have seen on the Kmart rear bars, they are very beefy. That's what they've done, they, they run them back to the chassis, so that, that would have worked a lot better. So keep that in mind, guys, if you're gonna do the same sort of thing. Um, the next thing I probably would have done would have been to add a little bit more room in the back for the lights, because well, the other side's good, but this side's a little bit um, a little bit tight underneath. And I probably would have went with the proper LED lights. These are the old school ones, so they're pretty, uh, pretty dull. So I might, I have got a second set there, I might end up changing those out and um, doing a LED conversion on them. Um, the next thing I probably would have changed would have been this this idea here So it would have been nice to have the uh, um, number plate on the bumper there somewhere instead of hanging on the edge there because that would have allowed to have um, A bag on the back for a bin for when you're camping it would be very handy to have on there So when we've got the trailer on we could have um, Have all of our rubbish hanging off here, and then we can just bring it home and throw it all in the bin All right, so with 33 inch tires You're gonna get a lot of wobble because there is a lot of weight pulling against it all the time Especially if you're going over bumps and all that so the next thing I probably would have done differently would have been um, a different sort of pad system on here. So this is just resting up against the bar and pulling against it. So it, it actually does pivot a little bit still. So what I would have changed, would, which I've noticed on a couple of other bumpers, would have been probably a bit of a C-section over the top. So it actually shuts into a bit of C-section rubber or something and locks in that way. So it actually stops the side-to-side -side movement of the wobble. So that probably would have helped a little bit more, but I did try and stop that with a bit of a pad here. Um, this little rubber foot here, I've still yet to change that. So I don't know what to do there. I'm probably gonna put some type of nylon block or something. So it actually sits on top of the bumper instead of just on a one little pivot point. As I said before, if I didn't have the number plate up there, I wouldn't have to use this wiring here. So that would have just been hardwired down the bottom there. It doesn't get in the way, I've just cable tied it up there. So I think I might have mentioned that in the very first video when I made this thing. Um, so that would, would have made that a little bit easier anyway, but it doesn't rub on the car or anything. So it's actually uh, pretty tidy there. All right, so I would have liked to add an extra point under here. Um, this is just for the breakaway chain. So if the trailer was to ever fall off, it'd obviously pull on this. Um, now it is tied into the chassis as well, all underneath. But I would have liked to add probably maybe another one here and here or something and get rid of this one because that's it's not really to tow off or anything. It's just for those chains. So that would have been able to allow me to put the chains and cross them over like you're supposed to. Instead, I actually have to just sort of hook them underneath onto there. So I think that was just a little bit of a design flaw. I didn't really think about it at the time about being um, the two chains or anything. It does still work well with just having them both looped up on the 1D shackle. All right, so this is underneath on the left-hand side. Um, that's the back of the light there. Now, I did paint the bottoms of those lights because they were 
going to shine on the bottom of the ground so i painted those um next thing i do get a lot of questions about is how i've attached it to the back so i've got the three bolts going through the sides there into the old rivet holes which held the plates on if you try and use those plates with a spare wheel they don't really like it they wobble around i've had all that um, happen so i just ditched all that now the next thing it ties in underneath is to the three tow bar bolts this is where my Heyman reese tow bar was mounted so it was all mounted to there and then under here you've got the two through bolts that was where the home and reese tow bar was mounted as well so that's the back of the tow bar there i get a lot of questions about this so my tow bar actually does run through there um i didn't have to notch too much out it was only a tiny bit i was a bit iffy about doing that but uh, i did that because i didn't want to add the tow bar down lower here because that just wouldn't give me any ground clearance this is why i put the the tow bar up here because i was always scraping on bumps and that out four wheel driving so with that tow bar, it obviously sits in front of the cross member, like at the back there. Um, I have read a couple of instructions on fitting some other rear bumpers and they actually tell you to cut this whole thing out, which is just silly in my opinion. So what I do, do still have to do is add the little plate here. It's just to stop any flex if this thing was to ever move up and down. But yeah, that tow bar, it fits up there good. It is a bit of a pain to get the pin out, but that's just sort of what it is. All right, and here's the biggest flaw that I didn't think about was the amount of wobble that the spare wheel actually has. So I noticed it started to get a little bit worse. Now the actual part that cracked was in here, that little section there, it cracked on the spindle, so I had to take it back out and weld it. So I fixed all that up, and then I had to come up with an idea to try and stop the movement of the spindle. So if I had made this a little bit longer down this way, I could have plated this whole bottom and made like a bash plate underneath and tied it into there. And that would have stopped any flex of that spindle. So I was noticing the top was solid and the bottom was able to pivot. So I had to drill an M12 bolt up through the middle of the spindle because I didn't want to weld anything because I still need to be able to get this light out. And I had to make up this plate. So I had to bend it in two places and then tie it into the tow bar. So they're, they're the two tow bar bolts for original tow bar bolts. So I tied it into there and this is stiffen this thing up incredibly it doesn't move anymore when you go over speed bumps or on corrugated roads it doesn't wobble like it's going to fly off um so that's much better so definitely think of that guys because that is a huge thing that i never thought of and it's these are the things you learn when you build this sort of stuff so if you can go back and do it again it definitely would so definitely add in some type of bash plate underneath or even just stiffen a big bit of box tube across and make more room for your lights. As I said, I didn't even think about any of that. So if you can add some of that and maybe back, point it back that way as well, just to stop any flex. So yeah, if you're gonna run 33 inch or 35 inch tires hanging off the back, there is a lot of weight pulling on this spindle. So you definitely wanna add some type of brace in there. That's a must. And as you can see, I can still get that light out just so as you can see up the top there is a little bit of a gap i did have to try and shave this around that is the little crack there that i had to weld up so that's it's a real bummer that I, that happened but that's on my mistake um and you're still able to get your hand up inside to get to those bolts so it's all nice and easy to put on um that's actually the tow bar in there so that's all nice and solid now i have towed car trailers with this and it's all held up well all right so that spare wheel used to move a lot and i was actually worried the first time i ever went camping with this bumper um i was sort of worried to leave it out for a couple of days because we actually had the rooftop tent come off the roof that was before i even built the camper trailer um so yeah this was sort of had to stay out and it was it was in the way and you know it just moves around and that so that's definitely helped that plate so definitely do something like that if you guys are going to do the same thing um, the next thing I'd think about would be long term, probably add another spindle to that side um, in case you ever wanted to put a jerry can holder or a, an extra spare wheel or even you could slide out a bench or something or a barbecue. I've seen a couple of different designs and probably just make another um, latch on the other side so you can have that because if I was to do that I'd have to sand all the powder coat off and get this thing re-powder coated and build more plates and everything. So just try and think of all that um, just for the future. I sort of only thought about what I've always wanted for the last two years and then built it. And then now I've sort of got the camper trailer and would have liked a bit of extra room. And that way, if you do build a jerry can holder, your number plate can go on that instead. So that frees up your spare wheel for one of those chuck over bin bags. So that would have been really handy to have there. I've actually thought about that many times. But overall, this bumper is a beast. I do love it. It's, it's toughened up the back of it a lot. Um, it's great to build something and know that you've built it and it's built to your vehicle and it's the way you want it But yeah now with that plate in there, it's all good So it's all nice and solid it would have been nice if I had some extra room to put a, a Reverse light on the back so I could flick them on because these still aren't very bright So that would have been good to have that as an extra option 
just so when you're backing up you can flick it on if you uh, can't see at the back. Alrighty guys, so that's going to be a wrap for today's video um, and probably all for this year actually because next week is Christmas so I want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and safe holidays but I will be posting next year so I'll be getting stuck straight into that camera trailer I will be painting it and getting the 12 volt system done so it's all out of the way and I'll be jumping back on the buggy after that so I'm thinking about changing the motor up on that I've had no luck on adapting the jack shaft to that motorbike chain so I think I'm just going to scrap that whole idea and start something new so I'm doing a bit more research into that, so definitely stay tuned for that next year. But yeah, if you haven't seen those builds, go check them out at the links above. Something else really exciting, guys, I've just launched a new website too for all the merchandise, so you can jump over and check that out to help support the channel. That's at teespring.com and engineered to design, so I'll leave the link down below in the description. So anything you guys buy helps support the channel, whether it's a sticker or a mug or um, a t-shirt or anything so go check those out. So yeah, I just want to thank you guys for all the love and support you've been giving me and the channel over the past year. I appreciate everything. This channel has boomed bigger than I ever thought it would um, and I've gone to more projects than I ever knew that I would possibly do. But yeah, we've got a lot more coming next year and hopefully a shed coming soon too. So yeah, if you'd like to help support the channel, jump over and check some of that merch out. Jump over to Instagram for an inside scoop before YouTube. Definitely smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. I'll see you guys in the next one.